Yes, my dear friends, we are now going to the next one, and that is we talk about the two processes, the reversible as well as irreversible. Alright? So let us first of all try to understand the basic difference between them. So to begin with, when we talk about two types of reactions, the first reaction is I say A getting converted into B. The second one is C D. Alright? So everybody understands that the first reaction A to B is a irreversible reaction. And this process C D is a reversible reaction. So the first point of difference is the directions. Irreversible has only one direction, and that is in form. Irreversible is bad. When you talk about reversible, two directions. Forward as well as backwards. Okay? So that is the first point of difference. I guess everybody is very clear about this. Now, we need to understand what is the major role or the factor which is going to determine the difference between the reversible and the irreversible process. So there are some points which I would like here to mention. Point number one is whether the process is reversible or irreversible. Always remember that initially initial counter of that should work. Driving force is greater than opposing force. Abhi aap bolenge ye kya hoga? Naam sa to samajh mein aa hoga, but kya kaam kya hai? Driving force is a force which allows the reaction to go in the forward direction. Opposing force is going to stop the reaction to go in the forward direction. And therefore, there is a possibility that the reaction goes in the backward direction. To hamesha yaad rakhiye ga ki shuruaat mein the driving force is greater than the opposing force. Sometimes there is a confusion among the students. Okay, sir, when you talk about reversible process, the opposing force should be greater than the driving force. Yes, I also agree with that. But in this case, we have to say initially, 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 because I know that the reaction is coming from here, it is reversible. But friends, one thing is that for the reaction to come, it is necessary to go forward. And for this reason, the driving force is coming from the opposing force. Okay, this is the thing you have to understand. The next point is driving force opposing force से कितना ज़्यादा है उसके आधार पे तय होगा whether the process is reversible or irreversible. I explain this by means of some numerical values, so it becomes very easy for you to understand this. Okay, so let us take for example, I have a driving force and I have an opposing force. Force is generally expressed in terms of newtons. ये शायद आपको बालू होगा। तो मैं दो केसेस आपको बताना चाहता हूँ यहाँ पर। और ये इनिशियल कंडीशन में मैं वैल्यूज दे रहा हूँ आप लोगों को। So first case it is hundred newtons driving force and opposing force is ten newtons. In the second case driving force is hundred newtons and opposing force is say ninety newtons. तो सबसे पहले तो आप देख सकते हो कि ये दोनों केसेस में ये कंडीशन वाले हैं। ड्राइविंग फोर्स अपोजिंग फोर्स से ज्यादा इसलिए रिएक्शन शुरू हो जाएगा कौन से डायरेक्शन में फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन में। हमें क्या बोलेंगे? लेकिन नॉट सी का डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू। इन द फर्स्ट केस आई विल से के अपोजिंग फोर्स और ड्राइविंग फोर्स का जो फर्क है तो उसमें हम ऐसा बोलेंगे कि ड्राइविंग फोर्स 10 गुना ज्यादा है अपोजिंग फोर्स से। और सेकंड केस में हम बोलेंगे ड्राइविंग फोर्स अपोजिंग फोर्स से 10 से ज्यादा है। समझ रहा है फिर यहाँ पे 10 गुना ज्यादा है 10 इनटू 10 इस अंदर और यहाँ पे 10 से ज्यादा है। और इसका मतलब क्या हो गया? एक बार रिएक्शन तो शुरू हो गया क्योंकि ये इनिशियल कंडीशन है ड्राइविंग फोर्स इस बीच में अपोजिंग फोर्स तो रिएक्शन तो स्टार्ट हो गया। अबे रिएक्शन शुरू होने के बाद अगर मैं थोड़ा सा अपोजिंग फोर्स अप्लाई करता हूँ now why do I say small or more opposing force? Because to apply greater opposing force we require greater energy, which is thermodynamically not a fair thing. इसलिए अगर मैंने थोड़ा सा opposing force apply किया और उस थोड़े से opposing force apply करने के वजह से उसका value driving force से ज़्यादा हो गया तो फिर reaction की दिशा बदल जा रही है 
और अगर रिएक्शन की दिशा बदल जाती है दोस्तों तो उसे हम रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस बोलते हैं अब क्योंकि मैं आपको क्वांटिटेटिवली सब एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूं न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यू के अनुसार एक्सप्लेन कर रहा हूं तो मैं इस थोड़ा सा जो ऑपोजिट फोर्स बढ़ाने की बात कर रहा हूं वो भी मैं क्वांटिटेटिवली बताता हूं से फॉर एग्जांपल दैट स्मॉल ऑपोजिट फोर्स इज 20 न्यूटन्स तो यहां पर आया था न्यूटन्स आई ऐड 20 न्यूटन्स टू दिस इट बिकम्स 30 न्यूटन्स बट सी द वैल्यू ऑफ ड्राइविंग फोर्स इज 100 न्यूटन्स इज स्टिल मच मच हायर and that means in spite of increasing a small amount of opposing force the driving force is still higher and therefore the reaction continues to grow in the forward direction it does not change its direction and therefore i come to the conclusion that it is a irreversible process i never have but here the same 20 newton opposing force if i would increase over here 90 plus 20 becomes 110 that means it crosses the value of the driving force after the reaction has started and when it crosses the value of the driving force so it's obvious that it is going to change the direction and the process is going to change the direction therefore i call this as a reversible process so this is reversible Understood this? So that's what I wanted to make you understand my difference. Okay, the most important factor which is responsible for the difference between the reversible and the irreversible is what? The difference between the driving force and the opposing force. Every process will have a driving force and opposing force. Every process initially the condition is driving force greater than opposing force. But it is the difference my difference which will determine whether the process is reversible or irreversible. If the difference between the two is very less, yeah, if you have a physics paper, you should say infinitesimally. Infinitesimally means what? We say, if I say infinitesimally small, that means it's very small. If I say infinitesimally large, then I will say very large. So if the difference between the driving force and the opposing force is infinitesimally small, such that if I increase a small amount of the opposing force, the direction of the reaction changes. Then I say that this is a reversible process. And on the other hand, if I say the difference between the driving force and the opposing force is infinitesimally large, such that if I increase the opposing force by small amount, there is no change in the direction of the process. Then I call that process as reversible process. All right. So I write on the definitions now so that it becomes very clear to you. So we start with first of all a reversible process. I write down in short I R. So as I said, the difference between the driving force and opposing force is infinite similarly large. such that a small increase in the opposing force does not change the direction of the process. Okay, it does not change the direction of the process. Such processes are called as irreversible. और अगर एक बार आपने एक प्रोसेस समझ में आया तो दूसरा प्रोसेस बहुत इजी होता है केमिस्ट्री की पढ़ाई ऐसी होती है एक कांसेप्ट को दूसरे कांसेप्ट से लिंक कीजिए तो इट बिकम्स वेरी इजी ओके तो अगर मुझे रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस को डिफाइन करना है तो बहुत इजी हो जाएगा क्या लिख दिया डिफरेंस बिटवीन द ड्राइविंग फोर्स एंड अपोजिंग फोर्स इज इनफाइनाइट सिमिलरली लार्ज लिखा है तो यहाँ पर आ जाएगा लेस, ओके? यहाँ पे लार्ज था 110 न्यूटन, 10 टाइम्स लार्ज है। यहाँ पे ओनली अ डिफरेंस ऑफ 10, सो इट्स लेस। सच दैट अ स्मॉल इंक्रीज इन द अपोजिंग फोर्स विल चेंज। यहाँ पे मैंने लिखा था डस नॉट, यहाँ पे लिखेंगे इट विल चेंज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ़ द प्रोस Okay, I hope you understood this. It will change the direction of the process. So this is my difference. 
what exactly we talk about the difference between uh, irreversible and irreversible process. So I guess definition of I just is much better. So please have a look at it. Now my dear friends, once we have understood the definition of reversible and irreversible, we now go into the difference between the two. Okay? So irreversible I double R in short I'm writing and this is I reversible. Alright? So, the first point is the definition. Now, I said, I have to write the definition, the whole definition, which I have written a little bit earlier. Then, point number two is, now, we talk about the speed, the time required. It's very simple, friends. It's very simple, so, it's going only in one direction, forward. It's very simple, so, it's going only in one direction, forward. It's going only in one direction, forward, coming backwards. Jaki, Anil, it's going to be more than one direction, as compared to Sir Jaki. You know, you can see it well. और जहाँ पर ज़्यादा समय लगता है वो प्रोसेस हम स्लो बोलते हैं तो इसलिए यहाँ पे जाके आने में ज़्यादा समय लगेगा तो दिस इज़ अ स्लो प्रोसेस तो जाहिर सी बात है दिस इज़ अ फास्ट प्रोसेस नेक्स्ट इंगेज इसको हम कंसीडर करेंगे विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क डन अब यह बताइएगा दोस्तों कि जब भी एक स्लो प्रोसेस होता है तो द वर्क डन जो जो एफिशिएंसी है वो ज्यादा होता है Okay, so once again I repeat, whenever the process is taking place slowly, the efficiency of that process is higher. और जब मैं efficiency की बात करता हूँ, that efficiency is measured in terms of what amount of work done. तो अगर यहाँ पर efficiency ज़्यादा है, तो यहाँ पे amount of work done is going to be what more. यानी हम बोलेंगे maximum. Okay, so हम यहाँ पर बोलेंगे maximum work is done. और maximum work is obtained. अब देखिए कई बार डिस्टिंगशन होता है या डिफरेंसेस होता है तो स्टूडेंट्स क्या करते हैं उसको ऑपोजिट कर देते हैं तो यहाँ पर मैक्सिमम है तो उसको ऑपोजिट हो जाता है मिनिमम सो मिनिमम बहुत ही सो भी तो कभी कभी गलत हो जाता है ओके तो शब्दों का इस्तेमाल इस तरीके से कीजिएगा कि अर्थ का अलग फूल हो जाए सो इंस्टेड ऑफ से मिनिमम बहुत ही सो भी यू जो से मैक्सिमम बहुत क्या नॉट बी यू अंडरस्टूडेंट बिकॉज दे इज चेंज इन दी आई वी अंडरस्टूड आई वी सी सो Maximum work cannot be obtained. Okay. Next one is okay. When I talk about the reversible and the irreversible process, as I'm talking opposing force, ki baat karta. opposing force has a greater impact on the reversible process, not on the irreversible process. Okay, if I increase the opposing force or if I don't increase the opposing force, the irreversible process is going to continue in the forward direction, isn't it? But if I have the opposing force increased, then the reversible process will not be there. And the reversible process is dependent on the opposing force. Okay, the irreversible force or opposing force will not be there. That is, we have to increase the opposing force increase. यानी इसका मतलब ये हो जाता है कि रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन दी अपोजिंग फोर्स उसके लिए वो प्रोसेस नहीं होगा और अगर कोई भी प्रोसेस अपने आप नहीं हो सकता तो हम उसे बोलते हैं नॉन स्पॉन्टेनियस क्या बोलते हैं उसमें नॉन स्पॉन्टेनियस एनी प्रोसेस इज कैन टेक प्लेस ऑन इट्स ओन इट्स कॉल्ड एज वॉट स्पॉन्टेनियस सो यहां पर इट डजंट डिपेंड अपॉन दी अपोजिंग फोर्स सो आई जस्ट सिंपली से दैट दिस इज स्पॉन्टेनियस दिस इज अ स्पॉन्टेनियस प्रोसेस Okay, this is a non-spontaneous process. Okay. Next thing is, this is the real process, irreversible process. Okay, going into the forward direction because it's natural. Okay, it's a natural process, it's a real process. Okay, so I call this is a real process. Or why we call it as a natural process. Yeah, it's not like this. Opposing force is big, then it's a little carbonic process. अपोजिट फोर्स बढ़ाने के बाद वो प्रोसेस हो जाएगा वर्मा होने के लिए ओके इसलिए हम इसे बोलेंगे हाइपोथेटिक आज हम इक्विलिब्रियम की बात करते हैं इक्विलिब्रियम इस स्टेट में अ बैलेंस इस चीज़ एट द एंड ऑफ़ द प्रोसेस में हम इरेवेंसिबल की बात करेंगे बिकॉज़ व्हेन द रिएक्टेड इस गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड इनटू द प्रोडक्� 
Then only the process comes to a steady state. And that is equilibrium. Look, when we talk about reversal, the difference between the driving force and the opposing force is less. So at times when I increase the opposing force in such a way that both the forces become equal in magnitude, then an equilibrium is achieved. And going back to the numerical value which I gave, 100 newtons and 90 newtons, yeah, yeah. driving force 100 newtons, na. opposing force 90 newtons, na. और मैंने आपको बोला था 20 न्यूटन हम पढ़ा देते हैं तो आपके दिमाग में भी अगर एक सवाल घूमता रहे कि 20 न्यूटन की जगह है सर अगर 10 न्यूटन पढ़ा दिया तो 90 प्लस 10 इज 100 ड्राइविंग फोर्स इज आल्सो 100 तो व्हाट इट इज इक्विलिब्रियम यानी समझ में आया तो ये इक्विलिब्रियम का स्टेट या स्टेडी स्टेट प्रोसेस के दौरान आएगा किस में रिवर्सिबल बिकॉज रिवर्सिबल प्रोसेस डजंट गो टू कंप्लीशन एट ऑल it is continuous, on and on, on and on. Okay? Reactants into products. If you opposing force bada hai, the production gets converted back into the reactants. This way. Yani during the process, equilibrium is achieved. Okay? Irreversible process goes to completion. And when the entire amount of the reactant gets converted into products, we state a steady state is achieved. And that is we say equilibrium is achieved. Okay? Yani, the next point here is from the equilibrium is attained at the end of the process. When the entire amount of the reactants is getting converted into the products. Whereas here we are going to say the equilibrium is going to be the process when the entire amount of the reactants is getting converted into the products. So what is the process of the process? Okay, whenever the driving force becomes equal to that of the opposing force, that is possible. Okay, during the process. And equilibrium is attained. Okay. So these are my dear friends, some points of differences between irreversible as well as reversible process. So I hope you have this video is a little bit of 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 which is going to be considered is the difference between the driving force and the opposite force. And then I explain to you the points of differences and the distinction and differences are distinguished between reversible as well as irreversible process. Okay? So I hope you have understood this very well.